All right, before we go, look, there is no shortage, I regret to say, of delusional people in the Liberal Party. Peter Dutton has a real job on his hands cleaning up the mess. You can start at the executive level. Who the hell's in charge of this dysfunctional outfit? Who allowed Morrison and Hawke to just do as they pleased in relation to pre-selections in New South Wales? And as for the parliamentary wing, well, the voters took care of that on May 21. Zimmerman gone, who, by the way, is reportedly distressed about being turfed out of the seat of North Sydney, distressed about not being on a taxpayer-funded salary and not having to do much to earn it. Others like Katie Allen and Celia Hammond, fake conservatives, gone. Scott Morrison's sidekick, Ben Morton, gone. Lucy Wicks, who voted against Tony Abbott and for Turnbull, has got her just desserts, gone. But speaking of Turnbull admirers, what about this Paul Fletcher? who's now, can you believe it, the manager of opposition business. Tony Burke will have a field day with him. Fletcher was the ABC loving communications minister in the Morrison government. At the start of the year, he announced that the ABC would receive a funding boost of 3.3 billion over three years. This was a move designed to win over inner city seats where his mates were facing fierce contests by the Teal independents. As Morris Newman wrote at the time, a former chair of the ABC and very eminent businessman. For nine years, coalition governments have tolerated the national broadcaster's defiant indifference to its charter and editorial policies. For nine whole years, they have turned blind eyes to its partisan and divisive agenda, grudging apologies and defamation payouts, unquote. Now, Morris Newman is the chairman of this company, ADH. He hit the nail on the head when he said, there are no consequences and there's no accountability. When 1.1 billion a year rolls in regardless, why change? He said it's a national scandal. Spot on, Morris. The poor taxpayer is getting rolled by a public broadcaster who has no interest in them or their struggles, merely occupied with witch hunts and broadcasting, with some exceptions, elitist left-wing opinions. Fletcher, a Liberal communications minister, who, by the way, never responds to correspondence. Oh, no, too precious for that. He propped this lot up. Well, now he strikes again. This time with the most ridiculous piece of writing which featured in the Weekend Australian. If you manage to read it without falling asleep, this was the guts of it. Fletcher argued that instead of ditching the wealthy inner city seats that were lost to the Teal independents, the Liberal Party should focus on winning them back. Presumably this means more funding to the ABC and backing net zero. The reason he's going on with this nonsense is because he suffered a swing against him of over 15%. Huge. But what about this for a laugh when he wrote on how to regain the seats? Quote, we need to remember that our record of strong economic management has been the key to these electorates being liberal for many decades. If economic conditions deteriorate and taxes rise under Labor, these fundamental liberal values will continue to resonate in these seats, unquote. Am I missing something? Are these the same strong economic managers who clocked up a trillion dollars of debt and never reigned in expenditure, adding to the inflationary pressures we're now experiencing today? Or maybe Fletcher is talking about his own strong economic management when he committed $3.3 billion of your money to the ABC. The coalition, strong economic managers, he says, inherited gross national debt at 20% of GDP. The Morrison-Frydenberg rule left gross national debt at 42.5% of GDP, forecast to climb to 44.9%. The Whitlam, oh, Whitlam, he couldn't manage the money. The Whitlam peak was 24.5. Paul Fletcher, you're treating Australians as mugs, perhaps because you won yourself. Quit writing boring columns and start revising the parliamentary standing orders because I think you're going to need them.